much, Dave. We're, we're getting you clear. Even when you're just How's that? Is that better? No. I turned, slightly starting. I, I turned the mic down just a little bit here. So. Yeah. Turn it down some more. <laughs> okay, is that better? Getting there. More. <laughs> We're so shy. Well, we won't have to worry about that because I'm going to mute everybody. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Dave, if you'd like to unmute, we can get our service started. I have a streaming on Facebook. Good morning. Welcome everyone to our worship service today of St. Gregory's Episcopal Church and Zion Lutheran Church from Deerfield, Illinois. We are going to join together in our worship today. Welcome to all of you who are on Zoom, as well as those of you who are uh, uh, sharing with us from Facebook. Um, we will join to get, thank you for worshiping with us today. Uh, let us know here in the chat if there's anything that you'd like to know, anything you'd like to to see um, as we join together in worship service and and be willing to to give a word or two as we worship together. I know there's always whispering going on in worship services, so this chat the chat is a place where you can whisper to one another or to me or to Catherine about how things are going and how you hear things. So with that, we will join together in worship. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are opened. All desire known from and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse these thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name throughout Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect of the day. The Lord be with you. And also with, and also with you. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, 
Grant us so perfectly to know your son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of, Ethiopia, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that I was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does a prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll start over this time with the mute off. Okay. <laughs> this is Psalm 22. Please uh, read along the bold. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor Lord shall eat and be satisfied, satisfied and, and those who seek the Lord shall praise, praise him. May and your heart live forever. forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants, My descendants shall serve him. They, they shall, shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. 
Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given of us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me 
and my words abide in you. Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace and love, walk with us as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of your son, Jesus. Heal our hearts, guide our minds, and lead us to a place of restoration. May we, speak, may we seek renewal. May our hearts and minds serve you and your truth. And may we bear fruit in all that we say and do. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the vine. Abide in me as I in you. My cousin Doug bought a nice sailboat about a year or two ago. I guess one could call it a schooner, a yacht, a sailboat, a large sailboat. Anyway, it's a pretty nice ship. Doug and his wife named that ship Abide after our gospel text for today because it's one of his favorite scripture verses and it's also something that he wants to remember all the time, whether they're out on the ship or whether they're in port or wherever they might be. Yesterday, I got word that he was finishing the boat to go out onto Lake Michigan, and, and as it would be, the boat was in a sling. And I said, so Abide is in a sling. Abide is going to stay there. Abide is going to abide. Now, the gospel from John for today and our other lessons for today remind us to whom we belong, whose we are, and it reminds us with a very clear vision. The lessons call us to a new and wonderful way of living, a way that welcomes the other that is not done alone, but in community, a way that starts with love. From our first John epistle for today, we read that everyone who loves is born of God, and we continue that joyous celebration of, of Easter, the resurrection of our Lord, and we're called to bear fruit and become disciples because we love. Though this is not always easy, how can we do this when we're still hurting from a pandemic? How can we do this when the news around us leaves us spiritually and emotionally drained? How in the world can we really realize the love of God in our lives? How do we proclaim the good news about Jesus when we think there's so much happening in the world? The killings, the attacks, the different things that go on around us, the racism, the unthoughtfulness, the irresponsibility. How do we proclaim the good news when that's taking place? The answer is never the same, and it'll vary from person to person. Still, the text, the overall message of this gospel suggests one simple response. We show up. We show up as the people of God. We show up authentically as ourselves. There's one great football coach, I won't mention his name because he's not with the Chicago Bears, and he always mentions there's one aspect that leads to winning, and that is we show up. We show up on the field. We show up who we are. We show up and do the best possible work that we can do. And as Christians, we show up. We share the good news with others. We speak it aloud. We share it in our words and our actions and our deeds. We show up. In our gospel, Jesus is addressing us. 
Twice he says, I am, reminding us that God knows our hearts. There's no need to hide from God, no need to hide those parts of ourselves which we might be ashamed of, those parts of us that we, we might say are the ugly parts or excuses to stay away from God. Instead, this truth, this love draws us near to God. All of our lessons for today talk about relationship with God that allows us to think that we can be restored and believe that God allows us to continue abiding. Our epistle reminds us that if we love one another, God lives in us. God abides in us. There's no secret we can keep from God because God is there. But what is love? We can attempt to define it in so many different ways. We can provide examples of how we have experienced love, yet it was still would not be enough. We can look at our relationships and draw from those, yet we would not have a certain definition because love cannot be defined. And just as we see in 1 Corinthians 13, love is described as as an action, as something we do. But we can look at the one who came into the world to die for us, to find a clear and wonderful that seek the well-being of all, a love that makes us curious about systems that oppress. Now, for some, this may be difficult to understand. Perhaps a concrete example is needed. Imagine you walk into any nursery or vineyard, and there you encounter life. There you encounter different individuals caring and tending to the needs of every single vine, every growth. The vine grower tends to them all, making no exceptions. The vine grower is aware of each vine. Similarly, God examines our hearts, provides for us, and can remove those parts of ourselves that bear no fruit. We have work to do, but not as lone rangers. We we're called to stay connected to the vine, faith connected to the vine of life, we'll probably experience some very painful pruning. If the vine grower worries about all the vines and knows that every branch can bear fruit, then the pruning becomes a special and necessary part of the growth process. Pruning will change the outcome for the vine, and it will change our outcomes as well. When we abide in God, we invite God into our lives how messy that may be. When we abide in God, we're empowered to seek our place in this world, loving others, living into the mission of the church, restoring all people to unity with God and each other in Jesus Christ. It's a slow and transformational relationship between the vine grower and the branches. Just like the Ethiopian eunuch in our first lesson, we will not always understand. We may also ask, how can I unless someone guides me? These relationships require honesty and it require us to let go of all those parts we think we can hide from the world and God. How many times have we been afraid to ask for help or even embarrassed to ask, who can guide me? If we've learned one thing during the of love, teaching, sharing about God, and baptizing. We have the disciples' example of love by following Jesus even amid their own shortcomings. All of these examples are needed. Our world needs people who are capable of this love because a church that only condemns and only sees sin cannot truly be a church. It would not be transformative by grace or mercy. There would be no 
uh, opportunity for restoring our brokenness. There will be an opportunity, however, if we are the church of love and caring for one another as Christ cared for us. And as we abide in that vine, there will be an opportunity for our relationships to be healed. We will learn to abide in the Lord, and later we'll be able to experience the fruit. As God transforms us, we transform the world. Archbishop Oscar Romero of El Salvador knew what it was meant to be transformed by love. He knew what it meant to be with people of his country and knew that loving the people of El Salvador meant that his actions and words mattered. He's reported to have said, if a man knows how to detach himself and detach from himself and knows how to love, he's a saint. Know how to love, he is no saint. This is how we love. When we abide in God, God abides in us. God abides in our relationships. God transforms. God will allow us to bear fruit. Amen. Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now I'm unmuted. <laughs> God of love, we rejoice with angels and all the host of heaven as we celebrate the resurrection of your son. Bless this season's joyful celebration and turn our hearts to you with new delight and commitment. At this time now, please offer your prayers in the chat of joy, awe, and delight, and I will voice them aloud. We give thanks today for butterflies, for God's beauty in nature, for Olivia Poulsen's 11th birthday, for Greek Easter today, for friendships, for our pets joining in worship, for Carol and Charlie Porter's 64th anniversary on Tuesday, congratulations, for sunshine, for renewal of health, for abundant sunshine, for the joy of taking grandchildren to see horses, for members working on our labyrinth, for seeing our friends, for more people receiving the vaccine, for my sister and Debbie's daughter visiting from Utah, for visits with family in general now that the vaccines have been had, for the Repschultz daughter Claire being appointed as an intern at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Baltimore, for JP and good health and Joanne and Jeff for Vicky's birthday, for babies 
and all the youth who participate in our service and lend their beautiful voices. For the Polson's parents visit this weekend, we pray and praise this Easter season. We praise you, almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. God of mercy, bring your church to new life. Awaken in us a faithfulness that manifests itself in joy, in dedication to work of reconciliation in the world, in care for your creation, and in awe of your glory. We pray and praise this Easter season. We praise you, almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. God of wholeness, bring those who suffer to new life. We pray for those who bear the burden of pain and anxiety, whose relationships are shattered, whose lives are full of despair. Lead us to find ways to be present with them and reflect your love for them. In the chat now, please offer your prayers for those who are suffering. For Chris and myself and our families. For Karen Rios and Patrick Bagdon, for Rob, for Jennifer, for Terry. For the homeless and the hungry. For Nick. For Laura and their continued healing. For Gary, Mary, and Jean, and Margaret. For those looking for jobs and those who are underemployed. For Annie. For all those in India, especially fighting, co fighting COVID. Continued prayers for Steve, recovering from COVID. For Katie, for Keith, for Bob Fletcher's family. We pray and praise this Easter season. We praise you, Almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. God of light, bring those in authority to new life in the ways they lead their nations. Show them the path of integrity and truth, that their people may live in peace, that all may have plenty. In the chat now, offer your prayers of intercession for our community, our country, and the world. We pray for continued vaccine rollout. We pray for all of our elected leaders. We pray that we can all be generous with our love. For all these things, for our government leaders, local and national, for all these named and unnamed, we pray and praise this Easter season. We praise you, almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. God of eternity, we give thanks for those who have gone before us and have entered into new and everlasting life in your presence. In the chat now, please offer your prayers for those who have died. For Kim Duncan, for Georgine McDermott, for Donald, for Bill Morgan, for the Repschultz neighbor Tom, for, Lance, for Nancy Lindler, Lindner Seibold, for Frank, for Bob Fletcher, for JJ. For all of these named and unnamed, we pray and praise this Easter season. We praise you, almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. And I saw in the chat, we had many, many birthdays. Let's see. Oh, Carol and Charlie Porter, their 61st, 64th anniversary for Olivia's birthday. Uh, let's see, who else? For Vicky's birthday, for Teresa and Andy Baroche and their technically their that counts as an anniversary or will be. <laughs> Uh, you put in the chat any other birthdays. Ah, let's see. For Shelly, for Ralph, for Jean, for Maggie, and for Becky, for Larry and Julie's anniversary. Pastor Dave, would you pray over our birthdays and anniversaries? Sure. 
Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the love that we have in our lives. We give you thanks for those who are celebrating this week, this month. We give you thanks for those who are celebrating their birthdays, that you've given them life and given them new life and continue to bless them. We give you thanks for those who are celebrating their anniversaries, that you have, you have sustained them and been with them through all the times of their lives, and we pray that you would continue to bless them. Give us such a sense of celebration. Give us a sense of love. Give us a sense of care for those around us, and bless each one who celebrates now. In Jesus' name, amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And, and also, also with you. With you. Also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 Sunday. Peace. 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 At this time, we uh, invite you to join together in giving to the missions and ministries of St. Gregory's Episcopal Church by going to the website of stgschurch.org and to give to Zion Lutheran Church through Zelle or by mailing your, your uh, gifts of love to Post Office Box 515 in Deerfield. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God.
in union, gracious God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. We offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, O Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our heart. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin in true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your internal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy that you were able to join us for the service. Um, I want to let you know about what we have coming up in the life of our parishes this week. But first, I'm going to turn... Our announcement over to Chloe Polzin. She's doing something very exciting. So Chloe, would you unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about what's going on? Um, hi, um, so at with my water polo team, I am organizing a donation collection drive for Lake County Haven. 
we are going to be in the parking lot of the high school on Friday night from 3.30 to 6.30. And any donations are um, greatly appreciated and they can just be dropped off um, during that time. In the newsletter, I believe, there's the full flyer with the list of everything that they need. Um, if you cannot drop off stuff during that time, uh, you can contact um, us and you could drop it off at our house earlier. Uh, any donation is greatly appreciated. Um, trying to really do a lot um, and get a lot of donations with this. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chloe. And I'm sure also if you can't get to the Polson's house, if you drop them off at the church and then just let someone at the church know, let Casey know, let me know, we can work out a time with Jill to have them come pick them up. Um, but we're really excited to be able to support Chloe in this. So don't forget this Friday, this Friday, 3.30 to 6.30. And yes, on in the newsletter is the big, huge list. There's all sorts of stuff. I bet it's a lot of stuff that people have around. So hey, Chloe. Um, just in case people don't have the newsletter, because the Zion folks don't have our newsletter necessarily, um, what kind of items? Are you looking for food or household or clothes or what? One second. <laughs> I'm going to pull up the flyer. Okay. Um, it is, you can do uh, gift cards to like Target, Walgreens, Menards, um, all the uh, like cleaning supplies, um, clothes, uh, hairbrushes, um, uh, pajamas, bathrobes, towels, sheets, pillowcases, blankets. Um, yeah. yeah. And their um, Lake County Haven site as well, their, their website always keeps their list updated with, um, with what they need. Um, I know like they took off uh, like they definitely don't need toothbrushes and toothpaste because I think they have a lot of that. And there's some stuff that they got a lot of over the winter that they, that they took off their list. Um, but it's for the, the families who are, who are living there and trying to get into independent housing. So um, I think the list is also on the St. Gregory's Facebook page. Yes. So if it's not, I'll make sure that it's there. And so for any Zion people or St. Gregory's people, you can go to our Facebook page and see it there. So, mm -hmm. all right. Thank you so much, Chloe. Thank we appreciate you. it. We appreciate this opportunity. <laughs> also, I just want to remind everybody, we are not rolling our Ascension Feast into a different Sunday this year because we all like doing our midweek services every once in a while. So we are going to be celebrating Ascension as its own feast this next Thursday, right? Next Thursday, <laughs> May 13th, 7 p.m. There's going to be great music. It's going to be an interesting service. So please put it on your calendar and do come. You will get the Zoom link and all of the stuff that goes out. Also, the Sunday after that, or maybe two Sundays after, guys, I'm not good with calendars. We have the day of Pentecost. And this is the day when we wear red, we celebrate the Holy Spirit. We are also going to be joining up, not just St. Gregory's and Zion, but also with Christ UMC. So it's gonna be a wonderful interfaith service. We'll have lots of fun music. It's just gonna be beautiful. So make sure that you're gonna be around on Sunday, May 23rd. This is our normal 10 a.m. service. And don't forget to wear red. Now, also, oh, if yes, Shelley. there are kids who I have sent um, a script to for reading for that Pentecost thing, please get those readings into me by the 13th of May so that we can put it all together into one beautiful reading. Ooh, and speaking of, also for that service, I am still looking for one more language for reading the Lord's Prayer. I have Korean, Swedish, Telugu, Japanese, German, Mandarin, French. You guys are amazing. I'm like super impressed with you, but I still need one more language. So if you have a language that you are comfortable speaking in, comfortable-ish, you know, you don't have to be fluent. Don't worry. Um, I will help you find the right text and examples of the pronunciation because obviously I don't speak all those languages. So reach out to me in the next week or so and we will get this going. So it, as you can tell, we're going to have a really fun Pentecost service. So make sure you're there, folks. All right. I'm going to stop the Facebook, whoo, the, the Facebook feed if I can figure out how to do that.